Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. Boo Radley's right there. And today I am making a video that um, I really wasn't sure that I would ever make on here because it just seemed like I was never gonna finish this book. So today I am going to do a review of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Um, if you haven't been watching my Harry Potter videos, there's a whole playlist. You can go check it out on my channel. Um, but I have been reading this year the entire Harry Potter series. Um, I read, I think it was July. God, it's been so long now. July was uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which was a reread for me. I had previously read that. I had not read any of the other books. And so then August was Chamber of Secrets. And then September would have been Prisoner of Azkaban. And October would have been Goblet of Fire. So you may be asking yourself, well, Peter, it's December. So why are you just now reviewing Goblet of Fire? Because I got very, very behind is what. And um, I am taking a break for the, the rest of the month of December. I was supposed to be finishing all of the books by January. But I'm now like two months behind. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to take a month off because I want to read some other stuff. And the problem is... I am listening to them on Audible, which is fantastic. I am listening to the Jim Dale version of the, or the whatever, of the Audible ones. But Goblet of Fire was 22 hours and like 50 minutes or something like that, okay? So, and when I listen to audiobooks, my husband always cracks up about this. But when I listen to audiobooks, I usually listen to them at two times speed. Currently, I just, it's an Audible exclusive, okay? I just downloaded, Boo Radley is now back here digging in the ground, um, or digging in the couch. I just downloaded, it's called Evil Has a Name or Has No Name or something like that, I think. And it's um, the about the Golden State Killer, and it's with Paul Holes, who was a detective and the investigator. It is so good, you guys. I listened to like an hour of it last night. It's really short. It's only like six hours long. But you can only get it on Audible. So anyway, um, but I usually listen to audiobooks at 1.75 or two times speed. But this, some things I missed, and I didn't understand what was going on, so I'd have to rewind it. So I had to listen to it a lot slower than I usually do, so it took me forever to get through. Um, Goblet of Fire is, in my version, hold on a second, um, let's see, it is 734 pages long, when I said 22 hours and 50 some minutes, and now let me just show you the difference between it and, you guys are like, we've read the books, Peter, so why are you talking, you're the only person on booktube that hasn't read the books, so if you can see, Order of the Phoenix, which is my next book, is even longer, so it's probably going to be like 24 hours or something. I haven't even looked, to be really honest with you, because I want to read some Christmas books. I want to listen to some Christmas books on Audible. Okay, so let's get into what I thought about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. First of all, um, you know, it's really, really fun listening to this series at my age, because I've heard so many people talk about it, but I always hear, like, people that are kind of obsessed with Harry Potter talk about it, if that makes sense. So it's like you can't tell them anything, like, wrong about it. So I'm really, I don't know a lot about the stories. I've never watched the movies. My plan had been to watch the movies after each book that I read, but I haven't finished Prisoner of Azkaban yet, so I'm still behind. Um, but... I have really no kind of like preconceived idea of what the series was about. I will say this, like, I mean, I kind of knew that it was about this magical kid that was a witch or, you know, whatever wizard that went to a school named Hogwarts. I mean, I wasn't stupid. I didn't live, under, you know, under a rock for the last 20 years. I knew kind of what it was about, um, but I didn't know a whole lot more than that. I saw the movie posters and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I didn't really know anything about the series going into it. I definitely didn't know anything about the series the further you get into it. And, uh, you know, after I had, it's interesting because like when I read The Sorcerer's Stone, I, I love The Sorcerer's Stone. The, uh, I did not love it as much the first time as I did the second time when I listened to it on Audible. And I will say this, that I think that listening to it, whether you read it out loud to your kids or you're a couple, I think this would be actually a really fun kind of thing for a couple to do, to read them to each other. And everybody like, you know, just pass the book back and forth before you, is this corny? This is the kind of stuff that I like. If you're a couple, like before you go to bed at night, you know, like each of you read like five, you know, paragraphs or something. But anyway, um, I, I think it would be really fun because listening to it out loud is totally a different experience than reading it. It really is. And, um, so I love it, and I feel like I'm kind of participating in what everybody else is participating in it growing up and as a kid. I was actually talking to a friend of mine today, and I said, did you read them? She goes, I listened to them on Audible. And I go, you did? I go, you listened to the same one? She goes, yeah, I loved them. So um, anyway, 
I loved the Sorcerer's Stone and then Chamber of Secrets I read and then it was I you know kind of like my tie for favorite and then I read Prison of Azkaban and it became my favorite and I have to say when I was reading Goblet of Fire I knew that it wasn't going to be my favorite until I got to the the last third of the book and it so quickly became my favorite out of the series and um you know I have to say like when the book started Okay, you Harry Potter, the Potter, or we call you, call you guys Potterheads. What do we call you out there? I don't know. I may be one by the end of all this. Don't kill me, okay? I just don't love the Quidditch stuff. I just, I, I'm not, listen, I don't love sports. I don't love athletics. I, and I know it's in a book and it's different. I think it's absolutely genius what she has done with this, okay, with coming up with the positions and the plays and all that kind of stuff. I just don't care. I just really don't. It's boring to me. So when the whole book started and it's the Quidditch World, Ma the World uh, Cup, I just was like, oh, God. And it just kind of seemed to go on forever and ever and ever. And, um, and that was like the part of the audiobook that I really got stuck in, like for like a week and 10 days, something like that. I just couldn't get out of the World Cup. I just couldn't, you know? And I know that other stuff happened after that, which played out at the end of the book. But like with the, the mark and all that kind of stuff, the dark mark. But I just was not that interested in that whole part of it, you know? And I will say this, <laughs> thank you so much that Quidditch at Hogwarts was not in this book this time. So I was very happy about that. Um, when you, they were in the Great Hall or whatever and they announced that there would be no Quidditch because they were doing the Triwizard thing, I was like, and everybody else booed, I was like, yes, no Quidditch! I was kind of happy about it. So anyway, I probably won't be reading the book Quidditch Through the Years or whatever it's called. <laughs> I just don't care that much about it. I really don't, you know? Anyway, so I started reading the book and then it's like all this kind of stuff. And I thought the introduction to the new character, I, I love how in every book there's introductions of new characters, you know? I really liked Mad-Eye Moody. Um, I really liked Fleur, even though she was kind of like a villainess kind of, you know, thing. But and I haven't seen the movie, so don't ruin it for me. And I really loved, oh, why can't I think of her name? Uh, the, the, the headmistress of the school that was like part giant or whatever. Um, I loved all of that. I don't know. I love that, you know, Hagrid had like a love interest in the, in the book. There were so many things that I just loved about this book this time. I even really, really liked that they addressed Ron's jealousy of um, Harry in the book. And I thought it was fantastic because, you know, to some degree, they always paint Harry as being, like, so, like, good and humble and all this kind of stuff, you know? But, like, to be this person that's constantly in the spotlight means your close friend is not. And Harry would get it, or Ron would get upset about that, you know? And I loved that. Um, I loved that. And I know, listen, okay, because... <laughs> Years ago, I said, I'm never going to read these books. I don't care if I see the movies, so just tell me what happens at the end. I already know what happens at the end, okay? I already know who ends up with who and all that kind of stuff. I wish I didn't now. I really did, do. Because I'm sitting there, and I know that that's what's going to happen as I'm reading these things. So, um, when Hermione with, with, with Crumb, and, she, and, and him mispronouncing her name cracked me up so much because that was so me, like, th through all the books. I can't pronounce anybody's name. But anyway, um... I love that she went with Crumb, that, you know, all these girls wanted to go with, uh, you know, with Crumb to the, what was it, the Christmas dance, I don't even remember what it was called, the formal, where Ron had to wear that outfit, but I loved that um, Hermione was the one that got asked, you know, and it had really nothing to do based on just lookism, which is, I thought a really, I, I, the one thing I love about J.K. Rowling's series um, is that there's so many lessons in there, you know, that are, are fantastic, that really i think to a younger audience it's like you're it's like teaching character lessons from a young age they're not just it's so crazy to me now you know like when i look back and i've heard about band books and this being on the band book list and stuff like that it's crazy to me because there's so many fantastic lessons of integrity and things like that and you know just at the end especially when Voldemort, you know, tells, uh, or, <laughs> you know, we're not supposed to say that, are we? <laughs> when Voldemort is telling Harry to come out from behind the uh, gravestone, and he said, you know, and Harry knows he's going to die in that uh, moment, which we all know he's not going to. Why? Because there's three more books. <laughs> so anyway, or is it two more books? Or there's three more books, right? <laughs> oh my God. So anyway, um, but we all know he's not going to die because it wouldn't be Harry Potter and the, the Order of the Phoenix. It would be Hermione and the Order of the Phoenix. But it's not, so we know that Harry doesn't die, right? It's, are you like that with movies, too? But anyway, when he comes out, he's like, I'm not going to cower to him. And I'm not going to play his game. And I'm going to stand up. And he can kill me while I'm standing up. And you know what you're really talking about is a person of character. I actually talked about that on my Peterisms video today. But you're talking about a person of character. You're talking about somebody with integrity. 
you know, and you're also talking about loyalty with the whole situation with Cedric and things like that. And the money and all the way, I mean, all of it, how it's handled. I just think there are so many great life lessons in the Harry Potter series. And so as an adult, like when you're reading it, like those are the parts that almost kind of seem the most magical, if that makes sense. Because I don't know, it just, uh, to just see somebody grow like that as a character, not through one book, okay, and to have this cathartic change, but through the a series, you know? And Harry was always kind of that person, but he didn't really know he was that person. And so that self-awareness is kind of cool to read. I will say this, okay? The last probably 50 pages were the best, whatever, I don't know, it was the last half an hour of the audiobook, was the best of the entire book. Like, I was like this. Seriously, I was like, what is going to happen? What's going to happen? All this kind of stuff. Especially, I knew, I knew, I don't care if you're a Slytherin out there, stop watching my videos. No, you don't have to. <laughs> I think I'm a Hufflepuff. I took the test once and I was a Hufflepuff and I was, I didn't want to be a Hufflepuff. So the next time I took a test and I was a Gryffindor and, um, <laughs> I just thought of a video idea. And uh, the next time I took it and I was a Gryffindor and that's what I wanted to be because of course I wanted to be in Harry Potter's house, right? And then my friend said to me, she said, now there's another test and it tells you exactly what you are. It's like the legit test that's supposed to be better than the JK Rowling one. So I was like, yeah, right. So anyway, but I'm gonna take that test. I'm gonna do it on here at some point. I'm gonna do that on here at some point and then we'll find out what house I'm really in. What if I was a Slytherin? I would hate that so much. But when Draco Malfoy, when Lucius Malfoy was one of the uh, dead eaters or whatever they were called, I was like, I knew it, you evilina, you. So anyway, but I thought they were gonna get, I hated that how Fudge just ruined everything at the end of the book. Like I wanted some kind of like, I don't know. I wanted some justice at the end of the book, you know, and maybe I'll get it in the Order of the Phoenix, but I don't think so. Because there couldn't be total justice or there would be nothing in the next book. So I know that it was kind of a setup for the next one, but this is the thing, okay? I'm taking time off reading it, but literally I finished the book and I knew this would happen. This happens to me with every book. I got done with it and I was like, oh my God, I'm so ready to read the next one. Now I want to read the next one, but I got some Christmas books I want to read first. So Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I gave it five stars, 100%. It was fantastic. There's lessons, there's adventures. I love the characters, they're so good in there. And um, I love Albus Dumb Dumbledore so much. I know everybody does, but like, I heard he dies. Don't tell me if it's the truth. I don't wanna know. I'm so sad already about it, but anyway. So, oh my God, I get all upset about it. I know I'm gonna be a wreck when I finish this series. I like, there's not, a, there's not a book that I haven't cried at at the end of it. I cry every time at the end of the book, you know? So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Have you read it which one is your favorite harry potter book in the series let me know um i love you guys and i will see you tomorrow bye